Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Facebook family and friends, welcome to the Garfield Greater Heights Church of Christ, where our evangelist is Brother Kevin McHenry. We welcome you, and as you know, we speak where the Bible speaks, and we're silent where the Bible is silent. Yes, sir. That's right. We thank all that is in attendance, both through uh, Facebook and in presence. We ask that uh, you have your own personal word. And that's what we speak. At this moment, I ask that those that are visiting, and those that are in attendance, join me in our prayer as we get our service started. Dear Heavenly Father God, we come to you to thank you for another day of worship, Father. We ask, Father, that those are in route and those that wish to attend, both through physical presence and through uh, websites, Father, that you make it possible for them. Now, Father God, we ask that everything we do is decently in order. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. We thank you for that all that he's done for us yes. to bring us to this day of prayer. Yes. Yes. And Father God, we praise you for all the things that we look forward to you doing for us. Mm -hmm. We ask this prayer and we offer this prayer to you, Lord, in Jesus the Christ's name. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. First song selection will be on page 825. First song will be on page 825. From Jesus, my heavenly King, love me, I know. Through praises to Him, I sing my word, I go. Through closely to Him, I cling, blessings to flow. I love my Savior. Once again, I'll be page 243. Here for the Christ we have striven after our labors are over. The rest to our souls will be given on that eternal shore. Home Yeah. 
church, I hope our burdens have truly been rolled away. Yes. The text for communion will come from the book, the Gospel of John, chapter 6. You can meet me at verse 53 and follow. And Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink mm -hmm. his blood, you have no life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. I am the living, as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, yes. not as your fathers ate manna mm -hmm. and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are most humbled and gracious that you give us this opportunity to commune with you. Yes, we are humbled knowing that we are not worthy, but you have given us a second chance through your death on the cross. We ask that you bless this fruit of the vine and this bread that represents your broken body and your spilled blood on Calvary's cross. We ask that you forgive us of all of our sins, all of our shortcomings before we partake. And we ask that everything we do with this worship service moving forward is sweet smell and safe. We ask the prayer and faith of Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. inspirational text for our offering this morning will come from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 7 and also verse 10 in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 7 and verse 10 and it reads so let each one, give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly but boldly approach your throne again, thanking you for all that you have given us and just given us the ability to be able to produce funds. These funds that would, on the surface, are used for our bills and our family and a warm plate. But dear Heavenly Father, let us not forget about our responsibility. Yes. yes let us give that it may be multiplied. We know that you provide and that you will multiply the increase. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you do and all that you will continue to do. We ask this prayer in faith. Amen. Onward rejoicing, I tread like way. Higher I climb each passing day. The hilltops of glory now rise in you. Where all shall be made you. And we're singing in the hilltops of glory, I now can see the brother over the wall. She has come go with me, and I will stay on the mountain. I soon shall stand the hilltops of glory land. And we're singing in the hilltops of glory, I now can see the brother over the wall.
The next song will be not made with hands. Christ when a building to prepare, not made with a hand, and will be dead with jewels red, not made with hands. I know, I know, I have no building. I know, I know. I know. Not When the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. And I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. My heart is right when he calls me. If yes, my heart is Listening for 
so good to be on this side of life yes, Lord. Uh, this afternoon, October 18th, mm -hmm. 2020. Yes. Uh, God has blessed me to have seen the face of this earth for some time. <laughs> 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 precarious ways God has still kept me. Amen. 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 And if you know like I know, God has kept you as well. Yes. Right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Thank you. It wasn't your mama's money. It wasn't Amen. a friend you knew. It wasn't a good lawyer. It wasn't the okay police. It wasn't circumstance. It wasn't fate. It wasn't karma. It wasn't aura. It was nothing but the majestic hand of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Was it the medication? It wasn't the diagnosis. None of that. Mm. It was all in the goodness of the hand of God that has us right here in the yeah. land of the living today. Some people went to bed just like you did last night, My Lord. but they didn't wake up like you did this morning. Mm -hmm. And for that, we ought to be eternally grateful. So glad to have the number of you are out this afternoon. We thank God that you. Yes, came out in spite of 
the Steelers and the Browns. Mm. Mm. I was telling my wife, you know what I know, it's been a war between the Steelers mm. and the Browns. Mm. And I'm talking Steelers, S-T-E-A. Uh, L E R S, and I'm talking the Browns. That's folk like you and I. That's right. <laughs> been a problem with the Steelers and the Browns for a long time, uh, and it ain't nothing but the hand of God that kept the Browns on the winning side. Amen. So we thank God for all that He does and for all that He is. In the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter four. I hope you have your personal copy of the Word of God. If you are visiting here with us today, we certainly are grateful. We are thankful that you have elected to come out and be with us this afternoon. If you have any questions about anything you hear, or anything heard, anything spoken, please, please do not leave here with questions in your mind. We want to look into the word of God and find all the answers. You know, the beauty about God is he has answers before we ever had questions. He has answers before we ever had a question. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. If you would be kind enough to please allow me to inconvenience you by standing on your feet at the reading of the word, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. If you stand with me now for a few minutes, I promise you I'll give you a long time to sit. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all get that by the hour from now. <laughs> Just funny. But Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. If you have to say amen. amen. If you're not say, hold on. Hold on. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. And the word of God reads in this manner. Where did you place? It's important that you have your copy because you need to know that whatever is being spoken to you, the writer of the Thessalonian letter told us to prove all things right. and hold fast to that which is good. Verse number 14 of the Hebrew writer, mysterious to those theologians of the day. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, the readers, and the doers of his holy word. Please be seated in the presence of the Almighty. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4 is the beginning of a series of chapters where Jesus the Christ is described in one of his offices of ministry as our high priest. And the author is giving us, it's one of the uh, five woes in the book of Hebrews, and the author now is giving us the second woe, the second warning. Uh, the warning of falling away or the warning of missing the promise is the ideal in this chapter. Uh, when we get down to verse number 14, the author says, uh, he gives us a command, and he gives us two commands between verses 14 and 16. The first command that he gives us is, let us hold fast our confession. Last week we discovered that this writing in fact means, let us hold with power. Let us seize firmly. As believers under the new covenant, we must hold on tightly to that which has taken hold of us. You see, you just didn't stumble upon God or God's grace. The truth of the matter is God's grace called you. Mm -hmm. And when God's grace called you and you answered the call of grace, now it is your responsibility to take hold of the same grace that reached out to you, now it's your turn to reach out and take hold of it. So the author says, hold tightly, hold with power uh, this thing that has taken hold of you. Uh, when things are not going as you have expected, 
when things are not going as you anticipated, when things are not going as you envisioned, then it's time to hold on. Even if all your plans are gone awry, it's time to hold on. When it seems that life could not be any tougher, you've got to hold on with the power of your faith. The power of your faith, and you're not depending on yourself. Your faith is in the faith. Your faith is in God. Your faith is in Jesus. Stop thinking you're all that strong because you're really not. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul, and we will all probably agree, one of the greatest New Testament Christians on the face of the earth. He tells us in Romans chapter 7 and beginning around verse number 7 and 8 going through, he says, For when I thought I set myself to be strong, I had my mind set to do things that I just could not do. And I always find myself doing things that I didn't want to do. So we see a struggle taking place in this great man of God that even he could not get a hold of. And you and I are in the same precarious position because sometimes things happen that just challenge our faith. Uh, when it seems that life could not get any tougher, you've got to hold on to Jesus Christ and the eternal rest that he promises. You see, but it's not just only about eternal rest. Because God and Jesus promises us rest even right now. See, he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's not just talking about in eternity. He's talking about now with the struggles and the challenges of life. We find ways to come up with answers. We, find, we search for solutions. We search for reasons. We search for, we just want peace of mind. But he tells us that we put our belief and our trust in him. I will give you my peace. Not peace that the world gives. Not joy that comes from accomplishments in life. But joy and peace that comes through what I've done for you. Jesus says he promises that we will have life. Life and we will have life more abundantly. He tells us that... Uh, there is one that has come, the Messiah says, for the, uh, the thief has come but to kill, steal, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. And the word there, the thief, is the word in Greek uh, meaning klepto. Mm. And we know what that word means. You know what a kleptomaniac is. It's just one that can't stop stealing. He's given and he's prone to steal. The enemy, the adversary, is a thief. And he's only come to steal, slay, and put an end to you. But he says, I have come to put something in you, this thing called life. Not just life, but I've come to give you an abundancy of life. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I've come to put something in your hands. The writing there says, I can that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But what it translates to is, I've come to put something in your possession greater than just life. I've come right. to put in your hand something more than just life. I've come to put something in your mind and in your hand that it surpasses all understanding. That's right. He's come to give us life to the max. This life is then the best life. It's no such thing. Everybody now is talking about I'm just living my best life. You can't live your best life if Christ is a part of it. <laughs> I know you might be thinking you're doing well because you got a good job. You know, found yourself a new house, a new apartment, got yourself a new girlfriend, new boyfriend, new wife, new husband, and you say you're living the best life. If Christ is a part of it, you are not living your best life. That's right. Amen. That's right. You can't live a best life apart from Christ. In Christ, the thing Christ tells us about living the life more abundant is in Christ we don't barely have anything. As Christians, please pick your heads up, pin your shoulders back, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yes. Stop creeping and crawling around here like you barely make it. Ooh, you don't serve on. barely God. Ooh, yes. That's right. That's right. That's he didn't right. barely die. He didn't barely get up. He gave his life that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's right. 
All you have to do is search back through the archives. Uh, we people mishandle scripture so much it's just sad sometimes. Because when Paul says things written before time are written for our learning, the word there for our teaching, that through the scriptures or through the patience of the scriptures we might find hope. He's not talking about living like they live. He's painting a picture for us to look at and say, this is what they endured through. This is what they went through, but this is the God that showed up even while they were going right. through it. Amen. He's not referencing go back Come to the Old Testament and the New Testament. That's right. He's not referencing going back to the law. He's saying, look at how God worked then, That's and right. God works now That's the same right. way. That's right. right. But when you look back through the archives and you look at the abundancy of God and how He does nothing barely. I'm looking at the time when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt. And here these people have been had the children in slavery all these years. Yet the Bible says that when they left Egypt, they had more on their back and on their camels than they could carry. Mm -hmm. God turned the hands and the hearts of the Egyptians and supplied them abundantly. Y'all not hearing this. God will take your enemies in order for you to have the best life and make them bless you. That's right. right. That's, right. Right. That's, right. That's right. Yeah, make them laugh. God just some things you just don't understand. It. Right. Mm -hmm. He took their enemies and made them bless them. So great was the blessing from Egypt that when it came time to build the temple and the uh, the sanctuary of God, the ark. They, the Bible says they started bringing silver, gold, rubies, rubies, diamonds, everything, yeah. platinum, and they have all of this from the hand of their enemy. They ain't worked a day in their life. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says they gave so much, Moses said, tell the people to stop giving. They're giving too much. Mm -hmm. But that's the more than barely God we serve. Yeah. Then the Bible says these same people in the land of nowhere, the wilderness, cried about being hungry. God didn't barely feed them. He caused manna to come down from heaven more than enough. The manna picked up and fed families for days, months, and it was not barely. They didn't have to stretch anything out. They had more than the, this is the abundancy of God. The Bible says the same God, when they got hungry, got tired of bread, they rained down quails so that quails were a plenty. They had all the meat. You can eat. Hello, vegetarians. <laughs> they had all the meat they could eat, and it was all right with God. All right. He didn't barely supply them. There's no such thing as barely with God. That's mm -hmm. right. Oh, my God. I need Christians that believe in the Lord and don't have what he's trying to offer you to just read your Bible. And I say it all the time. It's good to stand on the promises of God, but it's more important to know how to live in the promise of God. Yes. You don't get the promises of God by standing on them. That's what you use for your faith. But you receive the blessings of the promises by walking into the promise. That's right. We got to learn how to live in the promise. God is not finished, though, because the Bible tells the writer of Malachi, that when people put a trust in God, when people that exhibit, exhibit trust in God, uh, in their offering and in their trust, the Bible says, Malachi records that all you've got to do, God said, just prove me, try me, and see, won't I open up the windows of plenty to the land? I'm going to open up windows and pour out a blessing so that you cannot handle it. There's nothing barely about that. I'm going to pour out one blessing and you won't be able to receive it if you just trust me. We don't serve a barely God. We might as well have church while we're here. <laughs> Jesus says, in case you're wondering, if you give, if you trust God, in Luke chapter 6, Jesus says, just give. And when you receive, it will be a good measure. Yes, shaken up. Pressed down, running over, that's what's going to be yes. poured into your lap. Right. It's not a barely God, there's no such thing as being barely a child of God. Yeah. Right. If you barely make it, it's because you barely believe. All right. All right. That's right. All right. That's Be right. Oh Say that. If you barely make it, it's because you barely trust. That's right. That's right. 
You see how like you got it going on? I do in the Lord. And whatever I don't got, I don't miss. Because God is too good for me to miss. Y'all ought to be shouting. Because if you know like I know, God does not bury supply. He does not. I look at them people over there in Macedonia. The Bible says it's a poor church, ghetto church, and yet the rich church in Jerusalem needed help. And when Paul called on them, this is in 1 Corinthians, when Paul called on them, 2 Corinthians, when Paul called on them, the Bible says out of their poverty, they gave more than we expected. They gave better than the rich church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because the Bible says they first gave themselves to the Lord. When you trust God, he'll make you be able to pour out where you never know you had to be poured into. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 5, verse number 20. The Bible talks about the law and the fact, moreover, then, the Bible says the law came uh, that sin may abound, so that sin may be made known. And whenever sin was made known, so was the charge. But the Bible says that the grace supplied, the grace supplied is greater than the sin. See? And we, be, and, we, and we get this mood of mind and this frame of thought that when I sin and when I've done things, I don't know if God can forgive me. God forgives you beyond anything you can sin against. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. I know this is going to challenge everything you've been taught, but you won't find nowhere. That's the Old Testament talking about God. If you've tried God one time. You know when you try God one time too many, when you leave this earth. Right. As long as you're on this side of life, you have time with God. As long as you're alive, you have the grace of God. As long as you're alive, you have the forgiveness of God. Because His grace outruns any sin you can commit. We're talking about the greatness of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 20. The Bible says that God is able to do abundantly and exceedingly above all that we could ever ask. All that we ever thought of. That's the greatness of God. Please, church, stop being barely Christians. That's right. Come on now. That's right. That's right. You see, you're just talking about things. Well, let's go to James chapter 1. Where the Bible says that any man, any man, any man, any woman lacks wisdom, mm -hmm. let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not. He doesn't make you feel bad because you don't understand. He's going to give you more knowledge than you ask for. But you got to trust him. That's right. you got to ask him. So the writer says in his first command, hold on to your confession. Hold on to your profession because what you believe in and who you're anchored to is great enough to give you the rest he's promised you. He's promised you a rest. He's going to give you that rest. But you've got to hold on. Don't give up when things get tough. That's Don't right. give up when things challenge you. Just hold on That's right. to his unchanging hand. That's The second command in this writing is in verse number 16. The first command, what is it? Hold on mm -hmm. to your profession. The first command, hold on to your profession. You need to have this because these two commands are going to hinge on the very idea that we chronologically skipped over. Hold on to your profession. The second command, come boldly to the throne. Draw near. Come in confidence. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about that. Because some folk who don't understand the goodness and the love of God will have you crawling back into the church. Afraid to come back. That's right. Telling you you don't have a right to ask God. That's not what the text says. Amen. Well, well, well. Amen. The whole idea here. And I shared it last week, and I don't want to spend a lot of time there. Is this is a athletic encounter? 
and it is simulating a wrestling match where you're overmatched and outmatched, you're being overpowered. But it says that you're able to call on your tag team partner to come in and save the day. He knows you're being outmatched. He knows you're being worn down. That's why he's always in your corner. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we don't need, if you sit in the church and telling you you don't have this power, you need to run. Amen. Get out. Because God is a God that's full of grace and mercy. Not to be abused, not to be tempted, not a license to do wrong, not permission, not a dismissal, but it's just the fact that he knows we're but sand. He knows we're but dirt. He knows we're but clay. He knows we're bound to air. Yes. And so he provided help mm -hmm. in the time of need. Come boldly to the throne of grace that you might see receive help. The Bible says, come confidently. Or with confidence, but not consciously. What do you mean come with confidence, but not conscious? You've got to go to God every time you go without conscience. What does that mean? You don't go thinking about the last time you went. He's forgotten about it. Here's your shout. You ought to forget about it. Amen. Amen. You come in confidence. You don't come with conscience. Well, God ain't going to keep forgiving me for the same thing. I asked about that the last time. And in this Christian world, you've got to be like the jump shot shooter. Hmm. Okay. See, the thing about a good jump shot shooter, he remembers everything he learned in his mechanics of the game. He knows how to dribble. He knows the form. He knows the shot. What he doesn't know and think about is the last shot he missed. That's right. Mm -hmm. Come on now. He just keeps shooting. That's right. That's what we do when we come into the Lord. Don't worry about the last time you missed. Just hold your form and shoot your shot. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 Right. Stay true to the discipline of the game. The discipline is I know who the Lord is. He's my high priest and I can come to him anytime. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. I can come to him as many times as I need him. So we come with confidence, not with conscience. We come freely, but not fearfully. Y'all ought to be saying amen. amen. Stop being scared of your own Lord and Savior. That's right. That's right. The Bible says in Matthew chapter, I want to say it's Matthew chapter 12. Let me beat you there so I don't send you to the wrong place. Uh, I think it's Matthew chapter 12. I, I want to say it's Matthew chapter 12. Uh, because it talks about uh, Jesus being that man that will not bruise or read or those who are weak and are broken. I'll get that for you in a minute. Uh, what I want you to understand is Jesus is not here to make you feel bad. He came to make you feel good. You know what makes you feel bad? It's what you did. Mm -hmm. See, it's what you did that makes you feel bad. Yeah. Don't blame it on the preacher. It's not my job to make you feel bad. It's my job to give you God's word. The Bible says all Peter did was preach to them the history of Christ and it pricked their hearts. See, the enemy makes you feel bad, but it's good that you feel the wrong. But Christ is here to help you alleviate the pain of being shamed. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all act like y'all ain't happy about this. <laughs> Keep living like you live. Broken down, broken up, put out, unsure, uncertain. Because that's not the Christ you serve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Free you come. But you don't come fearful. You don't have to be afraid to come. The author says, come with boldness. You come with
of the openness expectation without the obvious feeling of dismissal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You come with the openness of expectation without the obvious feeling of dismissal. You don't go to God expecting God to just turn you away and send you away like he's tired of you. He loves you. He wants you to come to him. He wants you. He has all of this grace, all of this help, all of this mercy, and all he wants you to do is come boldly in expectation of receiving it. Mm -hmm. This is going to stand you just a little bit. But God is not like our parents. I don't care how good your parent was or how good your parent is. Because every now and then, the kid can get on his parents' nerve. Watch this, especially when they get grown. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And they say amen if you can. Amen. But God is not like that. He don't care how old you get, you're always his child. And he's always willing to help you out. Always willing to help you out. You come to him in your weakness. Because you know that you can't do nothing about what's happening. Mm -hmm. But you don't come to him wondering if he will help you. I've got to go to the only source I know that can help me. You have all these loved ones around you, all these friends, all these family. You got your stimulus, you got your good job, and none of these things are helping you. That's right. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. So you're wondering if what's coming next will help you or if there's any more help out there for you. But the Bible says you come to the throne with confidence, knowing that you receive mercy and you'll find grace in your time of need. You don't have to wonder. Mm -hmm. Even though you're coming to him because of your weakness, you don't have to wonder if he'll answer. And even though he gives us this liberal command of coming, we still come respectfully, but we don't come in reservation. Don't hesitate to turn to God. Mm -mm -mm. The more you try to figure things out on your own, the deeper you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. The more you try to navigate your own life, the further you get away from your appointed destination. In fact, the writer of wisdom says that we are to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Lean not unto thy own understanding, mm -hmm. uh, but acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he will direct or make your path straight. That's, that's, right. that's what it said. That's right. Lean not to your own understanding. Don't put your weight on yourself. I don't care how many degrees you got. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how many experiences you have. Don't trust it. Mm -hmm. Trust the Lord. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. And we're quick to turn to the left. We're quick to turn to the right. But I'm going to suggest to you today, you better learn how to look up yeah. Oh, yeah. to Jesus. That's right. The same writer said, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come boldly. We come boldly with confidence, no conscience. Freely, but not fearful. Openness without ominous feelings. A weakness without wondering, and respectfully without reservation. Come boldly. Two commands. The first one is, what's the first one? Come on now. Hold on. Say it like you know, I'm not preaching for my health. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, y'all don't get this. If you'll be still wondering this time next year, we'll be preaching the same sermon. Because mm -hmm. you're too smart to write it down. Let me tell you something. The shortest pencil is better than the longest memory. Mm -hmm. You know what I found out in the study? 
People go to church, you can hear all the sermon. You only gonna retain something like five to fifteen percent of what you heard. That's right. That's a study. Go look at it. People who take notes and visit the scripture retain twenty to forty percent of the message. People who study and meditate retain forty to sixty percent of the message. You want to know who the high achievers are? Those who write down, study, meditate, and practice. Amen. Those people retain 60 to 80% to 90% of the message. You know why you ain't getting nothing, first of all? Because you're too smart to write anything down. You ain't going to remember this message tomorrow. And then Tuesday, you'll be wondering, what's wrong with my life? And you ain't writing nothing down. So you don't have nothing to reflect on. Don't kid yourself, you ain't that bright. Mm. I'm not putting you down, I'm just telling you that life is too complicated to hold this. And you're challenged too many things to put it up. Mm -hmm. By the time you leave here, you're already thinking about your next challenge. What tomorrow demands of me? What I've got to give in tomorrow? How am I going to overcome this? How am I going to face that? How am I going to deal with this? What about that? You have too many challenges to try to retain this. You need to do something to arm yourself in this life. It calls for something for you. It's not magic. God doesn't believe in scribble scrabble. What does that mean? He says he'll write his laws on your heart, but not if it's already full of stuff. Because you couldn't make it out anyway. It's just mumbo jumbo. You got to start with a clean heart and allow God to put something on there by the time you put into God's word. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. First command, hold on to your profession. Hold tight. Second command, come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly. Two commands in this text. Both of these commands hinge on the door of verse 15. See, the door is verse 15, and you have the command to hold on and the command to come. Both of them hinge on this verse, and the verse is, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. The command before and the command after both hinge on the understanding that we have a high priest that can identify with our human frailties. Mm -hmm. Why am I holding on to my profession? Because I got a high priest that understands. Why am I coming boldly? Because I have a high priest that understands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The New Living Translation gives it like this. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses for he faced all of the same tests we do, yet he did not sin. Our high priest, the primary function of the high priest has always been to mediate between God and the people, a mediator for God. We go back and read the book of Leviticus when the high priest was first being established in their order. Every time God mentions Aaron and his son's high priest, he always concludes the statement with, High priest to me. High priest to me. High priest to me. Jesus is a high priest to God before us, the people. So his first function is in God's ordination of being mediator between for God and his people. So it's through Jesus Christ that all everything goes. All of our conversation, you can't pray to God without being a part of Jesus Christ. And I know a lot of folk that believe in God and they believe in God seriously. And they believe God works in their life. And I know the Bible says it rains in the just and the unjust. Please don't get that scripture twisted. Your blessings as a person outside of God and outside of Jesus Christ has nothing to do with you. It's because God's people are here. Y'all missed it. Mm -hmm. 
Because his people are here, he's got to take care of his people. It's not a cartoon where it's raining on me, but it's dry on you. You just happen to be on earth. You get what I get. That's right. That's right. 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 Mm -hmm. All them doctors, lawyers, medications, transportation, you just get what I get. God know I, I was never going to be a doctor. So he had to create doctors so that I could live. You just get the blessing. That's right. I couldn't walk around this whole planet so somebody made a car. So the child of God can get around. You just under the blessing. Mm -hmm. Y'all not feeling this. No. Because yeah. you have this distorted view of God that he's just running around sprinkling. Because you never spent time in the world. Oh yes, he's good to you every day with the blessing of life, the blessing of health, and the blessing of your mind. Yes, that's a fact. All you gotta do, I mean, my brother was talking about the other day, all you do is watch how God moved in the Bible. Mm. Took good care of the Babylonians just so they can punish Israel only to answer to the judgment of God afterward. But by while the Babylonians were doing good, they probably thought they was under the blessing of God. Mm. 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 The Assyrians, living good, living high, showing a priest to them. They repented. God used them to chastise the children of Israel. Probably felt like they were under the blessing of God. Then God came back after, after the discipline was over and wiped the Assyrians off the face of the earth. Oh, my God. They were living good because God's people was present. Mm -hmm. mm. That's right. Y'all don't know y'all book. That's why y'all looking at me funny. Y'all got this. God's not a Santa Claus. Amen. It's not at the mall. You just come and sit in his lap. And every kid that comes to the mall, you got the baddest kid in the neighborhood. Everybody knows your kids. <laughs> and he goes sit on his lap and still get a gift. That's not God. Come on now. Come on now. Not a Santa Claus. Now it's done, ain't you? That's, what, that's the idea you want to have with God. I don't want you to have that. I want you to know who God is. And I want you to understand every moment you enjoy the goodness of life, it's only because God says so and He's taking care of His people. That's why the proverb writer says, the wealth and the riches of the unwise man are laid up for the righteous. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It needs somebody out there to have money to take care of me. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't know how to build no house. I'm glad for the constructor to build houses. Right. Thank you. Right. <laughs> You say, well, I know how to build a house. You ain't chopping no wood. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you went and bought your wood from Home Depot. Yeah. Ain't died from the wood chops. <laughs> That's right. You ain't no blacksmith, you ain't made no nails. Thank God for the people that make nails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Them people was put there for me to have a house to live in. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's get back here. His primary function, the function that's the go between, between the people of God and God. He sacrificed, the high priest back then, he sacrificed once a year, but our high priest only sacrificed himself one time. Why is this critical? Because the high priest back then were guilty of sin and they had to cleanse themselves yes. before they went yes. into the Holy of Holies yes. and sacrificed for others. Our high priest had no sin, so he had nothing to cleanse himself of. He was the perfect sacrifice. He did not only offer sacrifice, he was the sacrifice. Behold the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. He was the sacrifice. He was the Yom Kippur of the shadow that was presented in the Old Testament. He was the old atonement. Y'all familiar with Yom Kippur, right? I ain't got to teach that, right? Okay, well, you can go learn it. Then be something to do. He was guilty. The high priest then was guilty as the people. Here is the text. So he could not demonstrate what it meant to withstand under pressure. He could not demonstrate 
what it meant to survive the test and not give in. Because he was susceptible and he sinned just like the people. But our high priest, having been through all the tests that we have, yet he withstood the temptation to sin. Mm -hmm. That's what makes our high priest so great. That's what makes us have somebody that can give us rest. Because when he completed his test, he rested. He was the sacrifice. Remember in the old days of the Yom Kippur, with the Day of Atonement, once a year, uh, the priest would go in, they had one lamb, they would slaughter and pour the blood out over the Holy Holy or the mercy seat. And then they had another lamb or goat that they would lay hands on with the blood and send out into the wilderness to take away the sin of the world. Well, when Christ hung the cross of Calvary, it was his blood on the mercy seat. And when he went down to the grave, he was the lamb that took away the sin of the people. Our preachers better than y'all like me. I'm going to educate you while you're here. You need to know these things. He did all that by himself as the high priest. He not only sacrificed, he was the sacrifice. That's right. And because he got up from the grave, just like the high priest coming out of the holy holies, when he got up, it was the acceptance of his sacrifice. Amen. He came out of the sacrificial place and hold, it lets us know that God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. All power in heaven and earth has been given unto him. Mm -hmm. Y'all getting tired of me? Here it is. The high priest, the Bible says we don't have a high priest who can't sympathize with our weaknesses. See, the first thing we understand about Jesus Christ is we automatically go to the cross and look at his suffering. But the truth of the matter is, when he came into this world, in Matthew chapter 1, the Bible says, and he came to take away or bore the sins of the world. He came into this world with a load on his back, carrying the weight of others. Y'all ought to be shouting because that's what makes him understand you. Because all your life, you've been forced to carry loads that you didn't ask for. Other folk who would never respect you or appreciate you, but you carry them anyway. Mm -hmm. And he knows about it. He knows what that life is like. He came into the world with a load on his back, just like that. I almost said most of you black folk. <laughs> but I had a lot of free black people in the church, but there's no one that's like to come into the world with a load on your back that you didn't even ask for. That's right. That's right. Y'all ought to be happy because he understands everything that we've been through. It's not an act that he put on. He just had to carry the weight. Sometimes the Christians will say, I don't know why everybody expect me to do all this stuff. I carry all the way. Everybody always lean to me. But you have a high priest that understands. It's not for everybody. You look at the person next to you. Don't look left. Don't look right. Keep looking ahead. And that person ain't as strong as you. There's no need in being mad at them, getting on them when they don't stand up. He gave you that responsibility to carry. That's right. right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. He understands. He know many of you were called to put on for the city, put on for other folk. Even folk that don't acknowledge your anointing or calling. There's some folk you carry and they don't respect you at all. Some folk you've done things for care less about you. Amen. Right. That's right. But he understands because he's been the same place. Mm -hmm. He healed, he fed people, and they still never respected his anointing or his calling. Wow. He ain't do nothing wrong. He have no agenda. Right. He have no secret ulterior motive. And he still never appreciated his calling. 
He understands. The hinge is your high priest because he understands what you're going through. Some of you, not all of you, were called to just carry weight that you didn't ask to carry. Here is the definition. Sympathizes. He says the text is of a high priest that sympathizes with our infirmities. All of our weakness of the flesh, all of our struggles of folk that just don't get it. They want to know why you act like you act and how you do what you do. They just don't get it. But Christ gets it. Our high priest experienced the weakness of the flesh in multifaceted attacks. I know sometimes it's like life is coming at you from all angles. Sometimes it's the church folk that get on your nerves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's folks you expect to act better than that to get on your nerves. And the persecution, the attacks, go to work, you want to be the best you can be, and folk won't let you. Mm -hmm. Trying to be the best child you can be, here it is, but your parents won't let you. Oh, there's another side to that. You're trying to be the best parent you can be, but your kids won't let you. Now, quiet. The word sympathize here. King James says, touched with our infirmities. Sympatheo. Sympatheo. Where we get our word sympathy from. It literally means to commiserate with in misery. To commiserate with while he in misery. So he's not standing outside watching you go through and say, oh yeah, man, I feel what you're going through. No, it says he's in it with you because of his own experiences. Sympatheo. But sympatheo derives from the word sympathas. And it means fellows in misery. The fellowship of misery. He knows exactly what we're going through. Wait, we're not finished. That word derives from the Greek word sympasko. Sympasko, which literally means now that he is jointed with us in the misery. Y'all go ahead. That's too much information. I told y'all, man, Captain Crunch is down the street just taking <laughs> potatoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't have time for baby food. I'm serious, I'm not playing. Because we need a stronger nation of Christians with the knowledge That's right. of who Jesus yes. Christ is and what he's done. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. We know how to go to him as our Lord. We know how to go to him as our Savior. But do you know who he is as your high priest? Do you know who he is as your high priest? It means to experience pain jointly of the same kind. That's why we hold on to our faith. He's experienced the same pain. That's why we go to him boldly. He's experienced the same pain. The same misery. You know, it's one thing when you're, when you're talking to your parents or older folk or somebody close to you, and they say, I know how you feel. I, I've been there too. No, they don't know how you feel, because it's not them. And I know that hurt you. Well, I know what I say. I know I lost my cousin too. So what? What you feel and what they feel. You just know they're hurting. You got over in the week. They're still dealing with it two years later. You kept on going with life, then life stopped. That's right. That's right. But you're dealing with a high priest that knows exactly how you feel. He knows how heavy the load and the burden is. He knows that in your human place of space, you're outmatched. And he wants you to come to him. You got to get out of here. Let's go. We have a high priest who understands our human condition. 
I know you love all those folks in your life, your mom, your dad, your nana, the preacher, the elder, teachers, besties, your boy, but none of them can share join me in your pain like Jesus. That's why the old folk used to sing, used to say out loudly, nobody can do me like Jesus. That's right. Nobody can do me like the Lord. And then it said, He's my friend. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Sir. yes. Mm. See, when you get older and start going through some stuff, as you build your relationship with the Lord, it ain't no old folks' song no more. It's real. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. You start realizing that that person used to depend on, and you start understanding and operating with hearts of compassion. They're not built to carry your load because they got their own load. That's right. They're at work too. But this man, high priest Jesus, has rested from his labor and he understands your work. He can give you rest. Y'all quiet. This must be too heavy. I apologize. We'll sing and shout next week. I came by to tell you this today. That the pain of our high priest was not just three days. You know, you get tired of folk telling you. Uh, when joy comes in the morning. But the truth of the matter is, it's been night for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we look at Jesus as he just suffered the cross. He was only dead for three days. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus suffered and he had a 33 year night. Because ever since he put on humanity from his God divine nature, he was suffering. Now, I never thought about it like that happened. Because you don't have a healthy picture of his work for you. God put on flesh that's already painful, it's already a suffering. A childhood of trauma. Y'all can relate. Came into this world as a child on the run. Displaced and misplaced. Family had to run. Why? Because they was trying to kill him as a child. 33 years of night. So you know what you're going through. He knows your pain. He knows your pain as a high priest. And he wants to help you. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you to come to him because he understands. And when we're preaching, sometimes preachers, we look at everything and we, and we look to anything to try to see how can we grab something some treasures and some nuggets that could be instrumental in understanding the nature and the work of God. And so we just look for things and we pick up things and we hear things and we're trying to see can we fashion it into something that can help us. And when I heard this song, and I just could not stop thinking about it because when he says, hold on to your profession, then he says, come boldly to the throne that you might receive because your high priest has done everything he can to help you understand how much you mean to him and how much he loves you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I hear El Debar singing, what can I do to make you feel secure? What can I do to prove my love to you? I am Christ in that. He tells you that you are more precious than diamond and silver. You are more precious than diamond rings, silver, gold. You're more precious than that. 
That's why he did what he did. He wants you to know that he loves you. He wants you to know that if you don't have his love beside you to guide you through, you just won't make it. Don't you want Jesus for your high priest? Don't you want Jesus to be your mediator in this world? Don't you want someone you can go to that you know for a fact and knows exactly how you feel? Stop expecting folk around you to understand you. That's right. Amen. That's right. I know that sounds bad. Because that goes against all the psychological things we've read. So we read a lot of the world, we don't read enough of the word. You need to find somebody that understands you. He don't even understand himself. How can he help you understand you? That's right. You need to look at somebody that understands us because he made us. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord as your high priest, You need to know that when he says, I know just how you feel, but this time I can't hear nobody. But this time, love is for real. Mm -hmm. I know just how you feel. You don't have to worry about the disappointment. You don't have to worry about the letdown. You don't have to worry about him not being there when you need him. You don't have to worry about if he understands. You don't have to worry about if he can supply you what you need. You don't have to worry about how many times you've gone there. Oh, it's you again. Don't you know folks screenshot, uh, they screen your calls while you're calling? He'll never screen your call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't get mad at your friend when they're not answering your phone and start text blowing up your phone with 500 texts. And the first thing we say when we get through, why you ain't answer? Because he knew it was you. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might be in somebody's house now. I apologize. <laughs> but you don't got to worry about that, Jesus. No exaggeration. He loves you so much. And you mean so much to him. He, his father, took the time. Well, you know, I got two of my brothers in here, but they ain't always been that way. But he took the time to count the hairs on your head. <laughs> he loves you so much that he took the time. The Bible says, even the hairs on your head, he's numbered. You don't think you're important to him? You don't think his love is for real? Let's go on our feet. Let's go on our feet. I want you to think about what Jesus is to you. I want you to think about the high priest work of Jesus the Christ. I want you to think about how much he's given, how much he's shared, that you might have a right to go to God whenever you are in need. If you're here today and you have not been baptized, as the Bible describes, let's make this clear. No such thing as general baptism. Just like you can't be a police officer in Cleveland and wear your badge in California, it ain't no good. You're going to have to be certified in California. Mm -hmm. See? And a lot of folks rest in the confidence that what they did before. It's not criminal because here's the truth of the matter. When you're honest 
And when you're sincere about what you want and you know better, you do better. But when there's dishonesty, you rest in the laws of what you already did because you're afraid to reach out and do something new. That's why I had the Hebrews people in bondage right here. They were afraid of the new because they were so in touch with the law of Judaism. So here comes Christ doing something new. They couldn't let go to reach forward. That's right. If you love God like you say you do, and you believe he loves you like you say you do, if you know Christ died for you like you say you do, then when you read the book and he says, right now when you hear his voice, hard not your heart, and you look through the book of Acts, you found there was a way that everybody was baptized and saved, and I guarantee you, it doesn't meet your way. Because it ain't one way. Ain't but one truth. I know you like to believe, I told you about God blessing everybody. Yeah, in a general sense, no. So you like to believe everybody can love and go to heaven the same way? No. It's not true. And I hate for you to miss. I hate for you to miss why you love God so much. There's going to be a lot of people go to hell that love God. Amen. But because they never obeyed. Because they never obeyed. Jesus said, if you love me, What's your commandment, Lord? He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. So I already got the Holy Ghost. Peter said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sin. Then receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You never had the Holy Ghost without baptism. Right. Impossible. See what happened in that. That was the introduction of the Gentiles into the church. You are not the introduction. Y'all see, I'm getting tired of standing. One day you won't be. You won't be tired. Because we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of God. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. My suggestion to you, because I love you, is why don't you bow now before you're made to bow? Well, amen. <laughs> That's right. What we sing again to just song with? Hmm? Okay, good. I want you to think about it. God blessed us to put a sister in the water this way. Yes. We're so glad. <laughs> See, people are hearing the birth. The Bible still works. Yes, right. it Amen. do. Amen. Yes, it do. But guess what? When we read chapter 4, it says, And we all heard the word, but it did not benefit us all, mm -hmm. not mixed with faith. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Faith is still an action. Mm -hmm. If you don't do nothing, it ain't faith. Faith will make you move. Faith will make you ask them, what I must not do to be saved. That's right. That's, That's right. what faith will make you do. That's right. I want you to think about it. If you haven't been born again, have been baptized the way the Bible said, if you have questions, let's just sit down and talk about it. It's my child. And I don't do it because of my job. I do it because I love to see people walk into Christ. Think about your own condition. If you're a child of God and you have not been bold into your high priest, most of them. you've not been bold into your high priest for what you need, this is your time. Won't you come as we together say, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And humble yourself in the sight of the Lord.
Signing up the service, and we can talk about some things because you need to be saved today. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Father God, we love you. We thank you. Thank you for our high priest. Thank you for your calling. Thank you that we have someone that understands all that we go through and all that we're in. Thank you for the throne of grace that allows us to have mercy in our time of need and gives us and supplies us with all that we stand in need of. For all those under the sound of my voice who have not answered your call, we ask, O oh God, please spare them one more day. Do not spare them, O oh Lord, in the comfort of their standing, but toward, turn them, O oh Lord, in their hearts, that they may move towards you in a mighty way. Humble us all, O oh Father. Humble us all, O oh Father. Humble us that we give way to your word and way to your truth. We thank you. We ask you to continue to have mercy on us. Forgive us and cleanse us of all our sins, all our unrighteousness, as we petition the blood to cover us. Thank you for everything that you do and all that you've done through our Lord and Savior and our High Priest, Jesus the Christ. And all of those who are in agreement, say amen. Amen. Thank you. Out of here, babe, stand up in Christ. Come on, sis. This is our new babe, Christ. Amen. 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 Lord, Christ, we were blessed to honor and baptize her yes. in Christ, and we're so glad for her noble and her great confession. Make sure you name uh, Imani. Make sure you uh, embrace her, love her from a distance. She don't want what you got. <laughs> but embrace her, love her. Make sure she's welcome to the family of God. And that we just so honored and blessed yes. to watch God still work yes. and Garfield Greater Heights. Right. Thank God for her. And uh, my brother here, Travis, my brother here, Chris, uh, and that work. You know, all these people that you see here, these are their friends. They're bringing their friends Amen. to the Lord. Amen. 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 They're bringing their friends Amen. to the Lord. 
Amen. And so we want to encourage them. All those who are visiting here today for the first time and returning visitors, we thank God for your presence. We don't take it for granted. We really appreciate you coming out. Uh, we thank God that you came out to be with us. And if you have any questions at any time, please don't hesitate. Uh, two things on our agenda. Sisters in Christ that I hear uh, that want to help uh, Sister Tamika, we need to be putting this Thanksgiving thing together. Uh, at least in the skeleton today, right? Because we need to be, we want to pass out these bags but we got to put a plan down. That's number one. Number two, this weekend, the 24th, uh, we've taken the youth out to the uh, escape. Guess I'm not going to be a part of it, but we are going out. Okay, so we're going to make sure we get our youth out uh, to the escape room. And so we want them to have a good time. But we need to meet about uh, first Wednesday of November. We're going to come back out here at 7 o'clock for the uh, Wednesday night study. We're going to be right we're going to come back out to the Wednesday night uh, study, so we'll meet here and have our Wednesday night class back as a group. Uh, and we will still carry on Facebook, and we'll still carry on our conference. Uh, we're going to come back out and meet and gather Wednesday night as a group. Uh, what am I missing? Okay. Uh, we look forward to you. We thank God you're here. Uh, all our guests, we just so thank you for you. Uh, thank y'all for coming out. Please don't make it your last time. Uh, uh, always, our hope is... If you came in here visiting, we want you to leave family. Yes. Amen. So we're going to love you as family anyhow, anyway, uh, because that is the love that Christ has commanded us to uh, exhibit to all men, all women, all people. So we just thank God for you coming out with us. God bless you. It was a little long today, but I need you to hear this thing about it. I want to turn to a three-part series. So I wanted to give you this, and I pray to God we'll be moving to something else different. 